I'm up. Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us tonight for Poetry at Tech Spring 2022 Atlanta International Poetry and Translation Festival. We're glad to welcome all of our poetry friends joining us from Atlanta and across the United States. We have folks tonight from, from San Diego, from the city of brotherly love, uh, from Indiana, all over the place. Uh, I'd also like to extend a warm welcome to our friends joining us from Ukraine tonight and other parts of the world. Welcome in, no matter where you are. Well, here at Poetry at Tech, we're well into our 20th year. During that time, we brought more than 400 poets, and we're still counting. And uh, tonight, we're going to add to that number. I want to thank the family of Margaret and Henry Seaborn and Bruce McEver for making the gifts that led to the creation of Poetry at Tech all those years ago. And I want to thank all of our donors, additional donors, whose generous support makes events like this, frankly, possible. You know who you are. Thank you. And we also want to offer our thanks to our partners for this event. Thanks to the Ukrainian Research Institute at Harvard University and Purdue University. Thank you both for your support. We have a list of dynamic poets from Ukraine and the United States who will be coming up in just a few minutes. But remember, I want to remind you, we have a special online edition of Terminus Magazine available that has all the poems in translation that the poets will be reading tonight. So you can follow along during the reading and see the poems in two languages. For the online edition of Terminus, just go to the Poetry at Tech website. That's poetry.gatech.edu. And like all our events, it won't cost you a dime. Our reading tonight will be moderated by Oleg Katsuba and Oksana Maximchuk. They'll tell you more about the event and introduce our poets. And after the reading, stay with us. Tave Akbar and his student Logan February will be here leading a, a brief Q&A. And I'll follow up at the very end with a couple of announcements about upcoming workshops and events. But for now, thanks for joining us. Let's welcome Ilya Kaminsky. Ilya, hello. Hello, Travis. Hello, and thank you so much for all the hard work you're doing. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And hello, friends. Thank you. thank you all for being here with us today. We have begun the Atlanta International Poetry and Translation Festival about two years ago when the pandemic started, and it became clear that we really need to bring together poets from all walks of life and get them in conversation. Both from USA, China, Belarus, Germany, and now Ukraine have translated each other and created some really terrific work. Is translation possible? Robert Pratt said, poetry is what is lost in translation. Octavia Paz, however, said, poetry is what is found in translation. Akhmatova said, poetry conversation is impossible without translation. And I say, you're about to hear some really amazing poets reading tonight. Truly, some of the very best writers from USA and Ukraine are in front of you today. What good luck for us here at Poetry Attack to put these wonderful writers together in conversation in the same room, especially in a time of crisis and potential war. So I would like to encourage you all to check the books. Our website has links, read them. They're transformative writers. Now, let me give the microphone to our collaborator and co-sponsor, Aliak Katsuba of the Ukrainian Research Institute at Harvard University. Thank you very much, Ilya. Uh, I, I don't want to take up too much of the time from the wonderful readings that um, are just before us. Uh, first of all, I would like to express my gratitude um, in the name of the Ukrainian Research Institute at Harvard uh, to Ilya and to Travis uh, for organizing such a wonderful event, um, uh, the Georgia Tech uh, Poetry uh, Translation and Reading event. Um, it's an, an extremely important event from the perspective of a dialogue, uh, something that is direly needed today, especially as Ukraine is going through such a difficult time. Solidarity and our, our thinking together and contemplating together life and death, uh, love and loss is exactly what 
uh, perhaps can change the world for the better. Uh, I would like to also thank Oksana Maximchuk, who has done such a wonderful job uh, shepherding along this project, the translations, and, and moderating this event as well. Um, I would like to say just a couple of words about um, uh, our work in translating and publishing works of Ukrainian literature in English. Um, if I can share my screen, um, I would just um, like, um, very briefly uh, want to show that um, uh, I'm sorry, the kind of, yeah, I'm sorry. I would like to try, okay, if, if it works, I'm going to try and, and do this. If not, I will direct you to our website, uh, uh, books.huri.harvard.edu, uh, where we have launched a new series of Ukrainian literature in translation, uh, uh, in which we are uh, already releasing this year uh, three titles, uh, works by Mariana Kijanovska, a wonderful translator, uh, which is also, uh, a tr I'm sorry, a wonderful poet, which is also translated by Oksana Maximchuk and also Max Rosuchinsky. Uh, we would like to um, uh, point out uh, works by uh, Stanislav Aseyev, uh, who is uh, a wonderful Ukrainian journalist and writer who himself was uh, held uh, captive in Donbass uh, uh, where the war is going on and has written about those events and how the, the war transforms people and cities, as well as um, uh, we'd like to also point to uh, Volodymyr Rafienko, a wonderful Ukrainian writer uh, who has written about his uh, experience of having to leave his native Donetsk and um, uh, uh, you know move to the capital of the city uh, and start from scratch, and then what kind of a transformation does one go through? Uh, Ukrainian literature right now is at its best, and it deser deserves all the support and all the uh, uh, reading that you can give them. And so thank you very much for joining us uh, in this. Thank you to all the partners. Thank you to Purdue University that also co-sponsors this event. And let's have more of this type of exchange. Let's have more of this kind of cross-reading, cross-translation, and conversation. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. It was such an honor to support the translation process, and I will now introduce the poets in the order in which they will read their work. Ludmila Khrasonsky is an award-winning author of three books. She has received Voloshin Prize and has been translated into other languages, including German and Lithuanian. In English, her poetry appears in The Nation, Plowshares, and Tikkun. She lives in Odessa, Ukraine. Diane Seuss is the author of numerous books of poems, including Four-Legged Girl, a finalist for the Pulitzer Prize, and Frank, Sonnets a current finalist for the Pan Filker Prize and the National Book Critics Circle Award. She was a Guggenheim Fellow and she received the John Updike Award from the American Academy of Arts and Letters in 2021. Hughes lives in Michigan. Boris Kirsonsky was part of Samizdat movement in the USSR. Since then, he published many books and was translated all over the world. In English, he was profiled in the New York Times and his poems appear in the Atlantic Monthly and Modern Poetry in Translation. A joint volume of his and Ludmila's poetry is forthcoming in English from Lost Horse Press, and I believe you can purchase this following a special link. He lives in Odessa, Ukraine. Javier Zamora was born in Lajer, Peradura, El Salvador, and as a child traveled unaccompanied by boat, bus, and foot to the United States. Zamora was a Stegner Fellow, a Radcliffe Fellow at Harvard, and NEA and Lennon Fellow. He is the author of Unaccompanied and forthcoming Solito. He lives in Tucson, Arizona. Luba Yakamchuk has received several awards for her poetry, including International Slavic Poetry Award. The New Time magazine listed her among 100 most influential people of culture in Ukraine. Her book in English, Africans from Donbass, currently recently came out with Lost Horse Press. 
She lives in Kyiv, Ukraine. Jenny Shia was born in Anhui, China. She is the author of Eye Level, which was a finalist for the National Book Award, and The Rupture Tense, forthcoming in the fall of 2022. She teaches at Bard College and currently lives in New York City. And now we will turn to our first poet, Lyudmila Khrysonska. She will begin by reading the first original poem from the selection represented in the terminus, and her translation partner, Diane Seuss, will read the translation. Но если бы она не умерла, ленту завязали бы бантом, подумала я. Взрослые шептались про то, что опухоль мозга и череп скрывали. Меня занимала атласная белая лента, вернее то, что под ней скрывали. Ира лежала большая смуглая кукла. Взрослые шептались про то, как она вытянулась. Ира всегда была высокой, подумала я. Мама Иры поцеловала меня и Генку солеными губами, похватившись, дала нам большое яблоко, одно на двоих. По дороге домой я все время думала, как мы будем делить это яблоко. Uh, hello, everybody. I'm so uh, honored to have done some um, work with this incredible poet, and this is my translation of her poem, Apple. Ira Karimova died in first grade. The straight A students were assigned to her funeral. Perfect grades, just me and Genka. We'd never seen a dead person before. Ira, the dead girl, wore lace, a lace dress within her jewelry box coffin, white tights. Across her forehead, a wide white ribbon, a ribbon as if she'd been wounded in war, a bandaged girl in a black and white war film. Had she not died, they would have tied the ribbon in a bow. That was the thought I held in my mind. I could hear the adults whisper. They whispered of a brain tumor, that her skull had been opened like a chest full of treasure, the ribbon satin white. I was fascinated by it or by what hid beneath it a toy that did not want to be found. Ira lay there, a big doll, sun-kissed. The adults whispered, whispered about Ira's body, how she now appeared longer than before, almost too long for her box. But Ira had always been tall, a tall one, I thought. Ira's mother kissed me and Genka with salty lips, lips cold and white with salt. Then, as if suddenly remembering, she handed us a large apple. One apple for the two of us, me and Genka, two. How were we expected to share a single fruit? A mystery I held all the way home. Thank you so much. Уборка. Каждый раз, когда он уезжает, она убирает в дому, выбрасывает старые вещи, бумаги, книги. Зачем спрашивается столько книг ему одному? Зачем ему атлас мира и путеводитель по Риге? Каждый раз, когда он приезжает, чтобы ничего не найти, Он вверх дном перерывает дом. Где моя черная папка? Ты выбросила ее? Выбросила? Выбросила. Прости. 
у нее в голове веник, в руках мокрая тряпка. Она хлопочет на кухне. Муж сидит на полу. Суп уже остывает, а муж не идет к столу. Ползает среди старых фото, выпавших из альбома. Вот девочка с мишкой. Вот дедушка в кителе. А где мои родители? Господи, где родители? Совсем сошел с ума. Твои родители умерли, Шлема. Oh, I love this poem. My first draft had no rhyme, and then Ilya told me, well, the original has a rhyme scheme. So I went in and tried. Keeping house. Every time he leaves the house, she cleans, tosses out his old papers. Why does he need all these time-worn books? She drags out the sweeper, whisks away the scraps. He's only one man, and all this. Then Eureka, under one pile, a sardine can, a world atlas, and a guidebook, Bariga. He circles back home. Back home? Everything is missing. His papers, his books, his sack of maps. Where's my black folder? He's fishing for it. Did you throw away my black folder? Yes, I'm sorry. It's gone. Her broomstick in one hand, wet rag in the other. Her lips hold back a yawn. He crawls through a spill of old photos on the floor. Here, a small girl with a teddy bear. There, a grandpa in uniform, hat pushed down over his gray hair. Where are my parents? Dear God, my parents. You're going mad, she says. Come to the table. Your soup is growing cold. Get off the floor. Your parents are dead, Flemma. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, so this is um, my first poem uh, that, that was translated, and I'm excited to hear it. It seems at times that silence has a roundness like an apple, and that even an apple is made of planes, minute horizontals and verticals, ruby and russet and freckled and spackled and black. And that silence is really not bereft of sound. It's only that a heavy stratum of noise has been lifted up to expose the resonances below. Eccentric cries of birds, which might be called lonely, and the workaday discourse of insects, and the whistling of something rising up or falling from the air. If this layer could be lifted like a cool, flat rock at the base of a fir tree bearing the writhers beneath and the layer of minuscule sound below and the layer below that, the final silence might be found, the last one, turning round on its stem like an apple. I will read my translation and it's amazing that like my first poem started with the apple and it is this apple round here again and that was like like really very very exciting for me so this is how it sounds in russian порой кажется что молчание так же округло как яблоко и кажется даже круглое яблоко состоит из маленьких плоскостей мельчайших горизонтали и вертикали, рубиновых и терракотовых, веснущих и пятнистых, и черных. И кажется, что молчание на самом деле не лишено звука, просто увесистый стратум шума был поднят, чтобы резонанс отозвался снизу. Эксцентричные птичьи крики, которые можно назвать одинокими, и еще будничный дискурс насекомых и свист, чего-то поднимающегося или падающего из воздуха. 
если бы этот слой можно было поднять, как прохладный плоский камень у основания хвойного дерева, обнажив корчащиеся личинки, и затем слой мельчайшего звука внизу, и еще один ниже, и в конце концов можно обнаружить последнее молчание, вращающееся подобно яблоку вокруг собственного черенка. Beautiful. Thank you so much. And this is uh, my second poem. Still life with turkey. The turkey strung up by one pronged foot, the cord binding it just below the stiff trinity of toes, each with its cold bent claw. My eyes are in love with it, as they are in love with all dead things that cannot escape being looked at. It is there to be seen, if I want to see it, as my father was there in his black casket and could not elude our gaze. I was a child, so they asked if I wanted to see him. Do you want to see him, someone asked. Was it my mother, grandmother? Some poor woman was stuck with a job. He doesn't look like himself, whoever it was added. They did something strange with his mouth. As I write this, a large moth flutters against the window. It presses its fat thorax to the glass. No, I said, I don't want to see him. I don't recall if I secretly wanted them to open the box for me, but thought that no was the correct response, or if I believed I should want to see him, but was too afraid of what they'd done with his mouth. I think I assumed that my seeing him would make things worse for my mother, and she was all I had. Now I can't get enough of seeing, as if I'm paying a sort of penance for not seeing then. And so this turkey hanged, its small raw looking head, which reminds me of the first fully naked man I ever saw when I was a candy striper at a sort of nursing home. He was a war veteran, young, burbling crazily, his face and body red as something scalded. I didn't want to see, and yet I saw. But the turkey, I am in love with it. Its saggy neck folds, the rippling, variegated feathers, the crook of its unbound foot, and the glorious wings, archangelic, red, as if it could take flight, but down, downward into the earth. It, it's amazing poem. I just, when I, when I read it, it was just like, like I gasped. I, mm -hmm. I think as poets, we are what we, we just had in childhood, what we experienced in childhood. Натюрморт с индейкой. Индейка была подвешена за одну трехпалую лапу, обвязана веревкой чуть ниже трех омертвелых пальцев на каждом из которых холодный согнутый коготь. Мои глаза влюбились в нее так, как они влюбляются во все, во все мертвые существа, от которых невозможно оторвать взгляда. Она там, чтобы ее видели, если я хочу ее видеть, так же, как и мой отец лежал там, в черном гробу, и не мог уклониться от наших глаз. Я была ребенком, они спросили, хочу ли я на него посмотреть. Ты хочешь на него посмотреть? Спросили меня. Кто это был? Бабушка? Мама? Какая-то бедная женщина, вынужденная делать свою работу. Он не похож на себя, добавил кто-то, непонятно кто. Что они сделали с его ртом? Пока я пишу эти строки, большой мотылек бьется крыльями об окно, прижимая толстое брюшко к стеклу. Нет, сказала я, я не хочу на него смотреть. Я не помню, хотелось ли мне в тайне, чтобы они открыли для меня ящик, но я решила, что правильно будет ответить нет. Или мне показалось, что нужно 
хотеть на него посмотреть, но мне было слишком страшно увидеть, что они сделали с его ртом. Мне кажется, я решила, что посмотреть на него значит еще больше огорчить свою маму, а она единственная, что у меня осталось. Теперь же я не могу насмотреться, как будто приношу покаяние за то, что не посмотрела тогда. И вот эта подвешенная индейка с маленькой свежей головкой, похожая на первого увиденного мною голову мужчину. Я тогда работала волонтером в доме для престарелых. Он был ветеран войны, молодой, что-то безумно бормочащий, с красным лицом и телом, будто его ошпарили. Я не хотела смотреть, но я смотрела. А индейка, я влюбилась в нее, обвисшая шея, загнута, колыхались пестрые перья, крючок, не связанные лапы и восхитительные, как у архангела, распростертые крылья, как будто она могла взлететь, но не вверх, а вниз, чтобы опуститься прямо в землю. Ну, это ты сейчас, по-моему, должен писать, mm. читать, конечно. Mm. Thank you so much, Diane and uh, Ludmilla. We'll move on to our next uh, pair of poets, Javier Zamora and Boris Kersonsky. So, let's start. книгу жизни. Запиши Огненным пером из крыла Керуба в огромную книгу, взятую в переплет, из кедровых досок, обтянутых кожей, кованными застежками из красной меди. Запиши меня в книгу жизни, запиши. Книгу тяжелую, как сама жизнь, которую не поднять, не понять, на страницу которую не перевернуть. Всю в пометках, как школьный журнал, переведен в следующий класс, в следующий год, в следующий раз. Успеваемость, посещаемость, поведение никуда не годились, вряд ли исправиться. Нужно вызвать родителей, прародителей до седьмого-восьмого колена. Запиши меня в книгу страницы в каплях воска, крови, чернил, спермы. Без чего не бывает жизни. Черный ангел летит с шафаром, летит и трубит в полете. Мне не страшно, честное слово. Запиши меня в книгу жизни. В кожаном переплете. Oh, I love listening to that poem. <laughs> and... Thank you. And it's been an honor attempting to translate this. And here is my translation. Write me into the book of life. Write me with a burning feather plucked from a cherub's wing into a huge book bound out of cedar planks, wrapped in leather wrought by red copper clasps. Write me into a book of life. Write me into a book heavy as life itself, which we can't lift, can't understand. Not even a page can be turned, all marked up like a school record book. Transfer him to another class, another year, another time, attendance, academic progress, conduct, good for nothing, improvement, improbable. Call his parents up, ancestors, seven, eight generations back. Write me 
into the pages in drops of wax, blood, ink, cum, without which there is no life. A dark angel flies with a shofar, playing his trumpet in flight. I'm not afraid. I give you my word. Write me into the book of life bound in leather. Thank you, thank you. It uh, sounds wonderful. Thank you a lot. Nafonia Malchania Mus, Lishni Grom Kananadi, Nafonia Ridania Vdov, Lishni Smir Klaunadi, Ktobagato Tirad, Ami Bidni Inirade, Nafoni Siniva Neba, Strashni Ablakov Gramadi, Dobrikeni Patoni Vtoza Rastot Travoyu, Nafoni Blenia Stad, Prastorni Volchimo Voyu, Где базар, там и вор, а там и блатной разговор, а там и перо под ребро или выстрел в упор. На фоне добра есть где разгуляться зло. В огне всегда найдется, чему превратиться в золу. Нож в кармане чужом, и сам ты ходишь с ножом. На фоне лжи незаметно, что сами мы тоже лжем. Sound. Again, here's my humble attempt. Against the backdrop of silent muses, gunfire thunders louder. Against the background of grieving windows, clowns laugh louder. The rich are happy, but we're poor and unhappy. Against the blue sky, the background, the crowds of clouds are terrifying. What won't drown in a river will overgrow with grass. Against the backdrop of bleeding flocks, there's more room for the howling wolves. Where there's a market, there's a thief and conniving. And then there's a shank in your rib cage or point blank gunshots. Against the backdrop of the good, there's room for evil. In the fire, there's always something that could turn to ash. A knife in someone's pocket and a knife in your pocket. Against the background of lies, it's not apparent that we are also liars. Thanks a lot. <laughs> that was good. Thank you. And now, now I'll read mine. And I'm so interested to hear what you did with them. And this is doctor's office first week in this country. It's procedure to inspect the ass of an immigrant kid. Undress, put this gown on, the doctor will be here soon. That first day after Sonoran Desert, I showered for hours when we got to parents' apartment. Father showed me the way to turn the knob that first day, how things worked. I hadn't seen him since I was one. I didn't know him, know him. This is how you make your peepee -pee grow, he said. So it's bigger, so it's the biggest. He said sometime that first month or that first year. Pull, pull, I did, pull. Do it now, you're young, it will work, he said. Did anything happen? The doctor asked in front of my parents, then alone. Did anything happen along the way? In Spanish, all of this in Spanish, starting with es procedimiento. This is how you get hot water, twist, then pull. No, I never used a sponge. Soap bar and hand was enough back there next to a well. I'd never seen a shower. Parents said it that way in English, chower. That first chower, my dirt drew a dark rim around the linoleum. You will hear from us next week. I came back for all the necessary shots. I grew up across the street from a clinic. Every kid cried. I came back, I got shot, I didn't cry. 
I kept turning the wrong knob. Even after dad showed me, then mom showed me, then we showered together to make me comfortable with my own body again. With theirs, with anyone's, it burned that first time. My skin, hot water, nothing happened. It burned, I'm sure, seguro que nada pasó. Thank you. I like your poetry about your childhood, the complicated one, which was a change of a culture. And okay, I translated it not into Russian, but into Ukrainian. I actually write both in Russian and Ukrainian last year. Mm. Dr. Ski office, Pershi Tijden v Ukraine. Це необхідна процедура перевірки дупи дитини іммігранта. Рознягнися, одягни цей халатик, лікар скоро прийде. Того дня, після пустелі Санора, я годинами приймав душ, коли ми дісталися батьківської квартири. Батька показав мені, як повернути ручку того першого дня, як усе це працювало. Я в останній бачив його, коли мене був лише рік. Я і не знав його насправді. Ось як змусити пісюн рости. Він сказав, щоб член пішов у зріс, що він став найбільшим. Він сказав колись того першого місяця або того першого року тягнути, тягнути. Я зробив це, тягнути. Зроби це зараз. Зроби, поки ти молодий. Це спрацює, сказав. Кажи, щось трапилося? Лікар запитав при батьках, а опісля на одинці. Кажи, що страпилося на шляху. Іспанською він говорив. Все це іспанською, починаючи з «С» процедименту. Ось як отримати гарячу воду. Крутанути, а потім потягнути. Ні. Я ніколи не користувався губкою. Там, де біля криниці вистачало мила та рук, я ніколи не бачив душ. Батьки так казали англійською «чауе». Той перший душ, тоді мій бруд утворив темну облямівку навколо на ліноріумі. Ми зв'яжемось з вами наступного тижня. Я повернувся, щоб отримати необхідні ін'єкції. Я виліз через дорогу від клиніки, де кожна дитина плакала. Я повернувся і отримав свій укол. Отримав укол і не плакав. Я весь час крутив не ту ручку, навіть після того, як тата показав мені. Потім мама показала мені, потім ми разом приймали душ, щоб я знову почував себе звично у власному тілі поруч із чужим і поруч з будь-яким. Мене обпалило вперше, моя шкіра, гаряча вода. Нічого не сталося, опекла, я впевнений. <laughs> that sounded wonderful. Yeah. That was really cool what you did with the Spanish and everything too. Thank you. Thank you. And now I'll read another long one. Alterations. She says she lit a candle and placed it under my balls when I was born because they were too big. Of course you don't want that. Then there's wetting your fingers with spit to pull the nose in the morning so it's straight. And it was straight, till I broke it, turning the corner, playing tag in first grade. You shat on your face, mom said, and hit me nowhere near my face. She hit me when I broke my hand, the branch of the sweet sop tree too thin for me to hang from. Two days it took to take me to the hospital. First, she pulled me by the other arm, hit my ass with a stick. Time out. She locked me in a room. When she saw my arm swell, she took me to the witch doctor who spat tobacco and rubbed me with ruda leaves, then blue smoke. Heal, heal, little frog's butt, he said. I thought it worked. We were poor. We sold pupusas to patients 
in the next room, a kid was tied to his bed. It's a thing that happens, the real doctor said. The jello was my favorite part of wearing a cast, but I liked it all. The not showering, the plastic bag over it when I have to shower in front of the well in my underwear. The birds, mom with a towel, earthworms in the dirt, wind, her fingers drying my hair, the flies hovering over my arm, the smell. We never went back to the doctor to cut the cast. Mom used the saw once my arm didn't hurt when I stuck a stick down it when it itched. She kept rubbing my arm with red fox oil first thing in the morning, passed a candle along my skin, dropped three drops of wax, then rubbed them toward my fingers lightly, lightly. The bones didn't crack. Thank you. Pay your mom to care about you as she could that time. Yeah. 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 Вони посування. Вона розповіла, що запалив свічку та помістила її мені під мошонку, коли я народився, тому що яйця були занадто великими. Звичайно, тобі цього б не хотілося. Потім, плюнувши на пальці вранці, потрібно було підтягнути носа, щоб він був прямим. І так він був прямим, поки я не зламав його, повернувши за рік, граючи в стали в першому класі. Ти наклав на своє лице, мама сказала, і побила мене, уникаючи ударів безпосередньо в обличчя. Вона побила мені, коли я зламав руку. Гілка цукрового яблука була надто танка. Я не міг на ній втриматися. Два дні знадобилося, щоб нарешті відвести мене до лікарні. Спочатку вона потягла мене за іншу руку і била мене по дупі палиці. Тайм-аут. Вона замкнула мене у кімнаті, коли побачила, що моя рука розпухла. Вона відвела мене до знахаря, який плювався чітуном, натер мене листям рути і випустив дим. Стіляйся, стіляйся, жаб'яче дубці, казав. Я думав, що це спрацювало. Ми були бідні. Ми попродавали магічні ляльки пацієнтам. У сусідній палаті лежала прив'язана до ліжка дитина. Таке трапляється, сказав справжній лікар. Лікарняний десерт був урубленою частиною насіння гіпсу, але мені сподобалось все. Поверху гіпсової пов'язки, поліетиленовий пакет, та коли мені потрібно було прийняти душ перед колодязем у спідній білізні. Птахи, мама з рушником, дощові хробаки у бруді вітер, Її пальці сушать мої волосся, мухи кружляють над моєю рукою. Запах. Ми ніколи не повернулися до лікаря, щоб розрізати гіп. Мама використала пилу, коли моя рука вже не боліла, і я чухав її паличкою, бо вона свербіла. Мама продовжувала натирати мою руку жиром рудої лисиці насамперед зранку. Вона проводила свічку над моєю шкірою, поки зі свічки не падали три краплі воску, потім терла воском мої пальці. Легко, легко, кісти не хруснули. Дякую. Дякую. And now we are going to turn to our last two participants, the poets who are translating each other, Jenny Shia and uh, Luba Yakimchuk. Luba will be reading in Ukrainian, and then Jenny will read her translations, and um, it will go the other way around too. Thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. Thank you for having us. Um, my first poem is about the war in Ukraine, which was started by Russian troopers in 2014. Uh, we have done nothing to provoke uh, the invasion now as well from the last uh, Russian invasion. Uh, Ukraine has about 14,000 war dead. 
And uh, this poem is uh, about the first part of this first invasion of old age with starosty. Померли дід і баба, в один день померли, в одну годину, в одну хвилину. Люди говорили ще від старості. Здохла їхня курка, їхня коза та собака, а кішки не було вдома, і люди говорили ще від старості. Розвалилась їхня хата, сарай став руїною, і погріб зверху присипало землею. Люди говорили, що від старості розвалились. Прийшли їхні діти ховати діда з бабою. Оля була вагітна, Сергій був п'яний, а Соня мала три рочки. І вони теж померли, а люди говорили, що від старості. Холодний вітер обірвав жовте листя і поховав під ним. Діда, бабу, Олю, Сергія, Соню які померли від старості. Це immense gift to get to work through this exchange with Luba and with Oksana's great help um, to get to detect the reverberations of her thought and feeling through the stratum of our languages. Of old age. An old man and an old woman died on the same day, the same hour, the same minute. On the news, they said it was of old age. Their hen died too, along with their goat and their dog. Their cat wasn't home. And on the news, they assured us it was of old age. Their house collapsed. Their shed crumbled into rubble, their cellar covered in a thick coat of soil. Still, they insisted it was of old age. The old man and the old woman were buried by their children. Olya was pregnant, Sari was junk, drunk, Sonia was only three. And then three, too, died. Of course, of old age. An icy wind tore off the yellow leaves and buried under them the old man, the old woman, Olya, Sari, and Sonia. They all died as we know, died of old age. Thank you, Jenny, for a beautiful translation. And uh, next poem, Unshaven Leg, is um, like another part of my writing. It's ironical one. Neholena noha. Поголила одну ногу, а про другу забула? Механічно вдягла білу блузку, коротку спідничку, чорні сережки, червоні губи і пішла на робочу зустріч. Тіла і поклала ногу на ногу, голену на неголену. О, ти ж феміністка, шепочуть мені, бачу у тебе ноги неголені. Дорогі колеги, давайте будемо об'єктивні. Права нога голена, а от ліва ні. Відповідно, ніяк не можна сказати, що обидві ноги не голені. На лівій стирчать чорні волосинки, а от права – зовсім права, і вона гладенька. Одна нога феміністична і волоха та справді, а от друга патріархальна, як шовк, та? Як це можна поєднувати? Обурюються одні. Жінки. Як так можна ходити? Дивуються інші. Жінки. Вдома розповідаю це коханому, поклавши ногу на ногу, феміністичну на патріархальну, а потім навпаки, патріархальну на феміністичну. А коханий присідає біля моїх ніг, цілую їх і шепоче. А я люблю тебе і на голену, і голену, і на півголену, і зовсім оголену. Unshaven leg. I shaved one leg but forgot the other one. Without thinking, I put on my white blouse, short skirt, black earrings, red lips, and went off to my business meeting where I sat down and placed one leg over the other, the shaved over the unshaven. Oh, so you're a feminist now, they whispered to me. I see your legs are unshaven. Dear colleagues, 
let us get the facts straight. My right leg is shaved, but my left, not so. How can you possibly say that both of my legs are unshaven? See how black hairs adorn my left leg. And my right leg, its right wing is smooth. One leg is feminist and fury, furry, true, but the other one is patriarchal, like silk, da. How can you have it both ways? Some women ask, outraged. How can you walk around like that? Some women asked, incredulous. Back home, I relay all of this to my beloved, crossing my legs as I do, the feminist over the patriarchal, and then the other way around, the patriarchal over the feminist. And my beloved sits at my feet, kisses both legs and whispers, I will love you shaved, I will love you unshaven, I will love you half shaved, and I will love you stark naked. Thank you, Jenny, for this reading and translation. It's nice. Thank you. So this is the first of my poems. Mm -hmm. Naturalization. His tongue shorn, father confuses snacks for snakes, kitchen for chicken. It is 1992. Weekends we paw at cheap silverware at yard sales. I'm told by mother to keep our telephone number close, my beaded coin purse closer. I do this. The years are slow to pass, heavy footed. Because the visits are frequent, we memorize shame's numbing stench. I nurse nosebleeds, run up and down stairways, chew the wind. Such were the times, all of us nearsighted. Grandmother prays for fortune to keep us around and on a short leash. The new country is ill-fitting, lined with cheap polyester, soiled at the sleeves. Uh, and my tr translation uh, into Ukrainian. Naturalizacja. Yazyka wkoročeno, batko splutuje, nemaje znajmaje, volyanice spolunice. Це 1992. На вихідних ми відхоплюємо дешеве столове срібло на розпродажах у когось вдома. Мати каже мені тримати наш номер телефону поряд, а бісерну монетницю ще ближче. Я слухаюсь. Ці руки не поспішають минати, тупають тяжко. Через наші часті візити, приголомши вулий сморід сорому, закарбовуються в пам'яті. Зупиняю кров з носа, бігаю сходами туди-сюди, пережовую вітер. Такі вже часи, ми всі підсліпуваті. Бабуся молиться, щоб пощастило тримати нас поряд, та ще й на короткім поводку. Нова країна сидить погано, вишита дешевим поліестром, замусолена на рукавах. The poem given new life in Ukrainian like this. To be a good Buddhist is, is ensnarement. A Zen priest says, I am everything, I am not. In order to stop resisting, I must not attempt to stop resisting. I must believe there is no need to believe in thoughts. Oblivious to appetites that appear to be exits and also entrances. What is there to hoard when the worldly realm has no permanent vacancies? 10 years I've taken to this mind fasting. My shadow these days is bare. It drives a stranger, a good fool. Nothing can surprise. Clarity is just questioning having eaten its fill. And my translation. Хороший буддист – це омана. Дзен наставник каже, що я є всім, чим не є. Щоб припинити опиратися, я маю і не пробувати припиняти. Повинна вірити, що не потрібно вірити в думки. Не зважати на бажання, що виникають як виходи і також як входи. Навіщо стяжати, якщо у земному житті ці посади не вічні? Десять років я тримала на цій дієті свій розум. 
Моя тінь у ці дні не прикрита. Вона жене на знайомку та дурочку. Навіщо? Ніщо вже не дивує. Ясність – це лише запитання, чи наїлося до схочу. Вау, вау, дякую. Thank you so much, everyone. And uh, and now, MFA student at Purdue University, Logan February, is going to lead our Q and A. Logan, uh, everyone, please uh, put your questions uh, of poets in in the chat. Uh, Logan, take it away. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you so much to the poets for sharing yeah. such a wonderful reading. Uh, that was really wonderful uh, to hear all those poems in two voices and two languages. Um, I won't be asking too many questions because I want to get to the questions in the chat. So I do want to let everyone know that you should and you can and should leave your questions in the chat for our poets. Um, but my question is really much more about like trying to get behind. My first question is about trying to get behind the scenes of this event um, because there's been so much. And like I said, it just was such an amazing thing to experience. But before we started, I know that Diane, you mentioned that. Um, you did not know if you could do this um, and you weren't sure of the process. So I guess I want to hear what you all feel about, felt about the process. Um, was this, how new was this for each of you and uh, how much of this was just wading into the unknown? And if so, um, what objectives then, what essence, what impulses did you depend on if the language maybe wasn't the first thing? And having done that now, um, where do you, feel on how do you see yourself on this sort of spectrum of Octavio Paz to Robert Frost? What's gained in translation? What's lost? Um, I guess I could start, we can start with Diane since I kind of referenced your... <laughs> oh, goody! <laughs> um, yeah, um, I, this was, I feel very uh, strangely innocent about this process because I'd never done it before. I speak some Spanish, but I I thought I would need to speak the language or at least understand, be, be somewhat fluid in a language that I was translating from. I didn't realize that I could be given sort of the raw word by word translation that then I could work with and, and um, use my own aesthetic judgments by you know looking as deeply as I could into the language that was given me to try to understand okay what what what's making this poem tick and and who is this uh voice and artist behind it and so it ultimately felt like a really mysterious act of empathy and I hope there are ways in which I got it right. You know, my big confusion was how much do I use my own um, guesses or instincts and how much do I try to understand the the instincts and um, the meanings of the person who wrote the poem. And I guess I I tried to balance them, hoping to get at what the poet meant through my own feelings and connection. So it was a really wonderful experience and I want to do more. Thanks, Logan. Well, uh, I can say that I, I, I have done some translations previously, but it was not like I would do uh, the, the, the translation uh, of, of poems of someone who I just began to to feel as a very close person to me at the start and it's amazing like you dive into the translation as if you're writing your something of your own and you just just feel uh, literally feel this this person and the way the person is reading and thinking and uh, you feel the rhythm and the rhythm of the breath and this is just like very very fascinating and amazing process Sometimes it doesn't go on well, but then when when you start, it's like like you write your own poetry. But it is it is very 
very very uh, exciting thing just to follow step in step. It's, it's very very hard to explain, but uh, something must be very close to you so that the translation is really uh, successful. I mean the, this breath or the breath of poetry or whatever you call it. I'll jump in to say that, yeah, it was a very humbling and beautiful experience to do this kind of work. I almost hesitate to do, to say what I call translation. It felt like um, Oksana, who did the, the heavy lifting and the ferrying over from the actual Ukrainian into the English, it was like Oksana had um, had witnessed something firsthand, an event, something extraordinary, and she was recounting it to me in English, and it was my job to paint it, so to work in a whole totally different medium in some sense. Um, and, you know, a lot of my initial work was listening to Luba's um, recordings of the poem and then really asking her about the poem's subtext, what what was beneath the surface and trying to get underneath the skin of the poem and, and you know, be inside the speaker's psychic state. And then from there, trying to use my vernacular, my language and terms of that to um, convey some of that emotional tonality and what's left unspoken while keeping um, the mystery that was inhered in the poem. Thank you for that. Yeah, we have with Jenny um, kind of uh, a mailing, yes, maybe a big mailing. And um, um, uh, I, ha I have, um, such uh, experience. I've uh, translated um, another poems uh, from English and Belar uh, Belarusian. Uh, and um, for me, poetry is uh, like oral gender, and um, I need to read a lot when uh, I'm translating. And um, uh, sometimes uh, I cannot stop to change word in these translations. And uh, even today, in one uh, poem, uh, in one in one poem, I changed one word. Um, uh, and um, it could be um, uh, not easy to stop this process. It's interesting, and it's very mm -hmm. similar to uh, producing your own poetry, but you cannot change can change uh, what you want uh, because it, it isn't yours. Very strange uh, feeling <laughs> sometimes. It's like they're always changing, like same with me, like I changed a lot in the second poem of Boris's uh, from what you had in the PDF. It's like they keep on growing and I feel like a month was not long enough to really get into it. Um, but thank you, Oksana, you did a lot of of the work and we were just like chiseling away so uh boris did you want to chime in i would say that uh, translation interpretation is a kind of reincarnation you should be another person with another experience sometimes and for me translation is not a kind of profession, you know. You could be professional translator. You is given a book and you say you should have a deadline. You should translate it and give it to editor. No, it is a question of love, of inspiration. And if yeah, I started something and it doesn't work first day, I just would quit. But sometimes uh, it leads me. Uh, and uh, in this kind of interpretation of translation, I really receive a great excitement. Thank, Thank you. you for joining us. Uh, I have one more question, and then I will pull a question or two from the chat if we have time for that. Okay, um, or I could just, some of these questions are play, touching on the questions of like, how do you go about the process of 
thinking about your own writing while you're thinking about translation and thinking about how to balance the meaning with the form, which I think some of you have sort of touched on. Um, but there's a question here um, from Wendy Truran about Boris and um, his translation of Javier's poem, Doctor's Office, into the Ukrainian rather than Russian. Um, I think that's an interesting question also because at the start of this, Ilya mentioned how translation is so important, especially in times of crises and uh, potential wars. Um, so I was wondering if Boris could speak on working be between those two languages. You know, uh, for me, Ukrainian is a part of my life from my childhood. But my native language still is Russian. And I started right in Ukrainian and in Russian in school. And it was not good poetry. It was a school poetry, you know. And my Ukrainian teacher uh, said to me, oh, no, you should quit. But my Russian literature teacher say, OK, it is good, you should continue. So I continue with Russian, and but still I learn Ukrainian, still I read Ukrainian. It is difficult to imagine, but during Soviet Union in Ukraine, some poetry and some prose where it was translated before it was translated into Russian and the interpreter were extremely good. Uh, for example, French poet Vignon, I first time read in Ukrainian. So, but spoken language still was Russian. And then I received another teacher of Ukrainian. It was Vladimir Putin. I feel myself ashamed that I don't use Ukrainian during my lecturing because I am teacher and uh, in my communication. So I become a student, a, even a pupil. I took a big dictionary, old Ukrainian dictionary, new Ukrainian dictionary. First, I translated my own Russian poetry into Ukrainian. Then something wake, wake up in, oh, woke, a, up. woke up in me, and I started to write Ukrainian. Okay, it still I believe needs some editing, but my Russian poetry needs editing mm -hmm. too. Uh, okay. So no, I can choose. Uh, sometimes I prefer translate into Russian, but sometimes I be, I feel it would be better in Ukrainian. First time when uh, Oksana tak, uh, gave me text, uh, she says, "Okay, you can translate it into Russian or into Ukrainian. You're totally free." And I started to do it in Ukrainian and decided I will continue and I will finish. Thank you. That's very interesting, especially to trace the journey of how it like it's picked up from what you read and who taught you. Um, I'm not totally sure if we have time for one more question, but I'm very curious as to I mean I think when you talked when you all talked about the processes of translation, some words that came up were just like ideas of humility and innocence and mystery, which is like kind of like going back to the heart of poetry. Um, and I think this is very, like being at a festival, like this is a very cool thing, especially during the pandemic when we're not able to actually physically cross borders and be in spaces with each other. So in thinking of these ideas of dialogue and conjunction and larger conversation, um, I guess I would just like to hear what you all think after having done um, an exercise on a project like this. What are your visions for those future conjunctions? And because I do feel like we're just breaking the ground as to what these could be and what international poetry can look like. 
So I would like to hear what your visions are and also probably what do you think is work that needs to be done, work that people could be conscious of or people could contribute in their own ways. Um, anyone could answer if they have an answer or any thoughts in mind. I'll quickly say that one of the first things I want to do is just press the books of all of the Ukrainian poets we've heard um, into the hands of everyone I know, you know, I mean, in the US, I, it's some small sliver percentage of books each year that actually are translated books from other languages, and they're hard to find, you can find them in university libraries, but, you know, even bookstores, you know, don't always carry many translations um, in poetry. And so to, you know, have the opportunity to learn about everyone's work here tonight really just felt like a privilege and a real gift and makes you want to, you know, not only um, continue this act of exchange and translation, but really to promote, you know, um, so much of the excellent translated work already out there and to make sure we don't become this monoculture in the U.S. where all we do is read and think and um, write in English um, because we get so revitalized, um, you know, having this traffic of languages and, and being part of that life. Thank you, Jenny. Um, I think that's a, okay, please go. No, go, please. No, I just was going to speak on what Jenny said about um, how much the accessibility of translated work is important. Um, also, just thinking of Boris saying that um, he first encountered uh, poems in Ukrainian translation, and that has really sort of shaped um, how he goes about doing his work. Um, yeah, so I just thought that was interesting, but Diane, please, I'd love to hear what you think. Oh, well, nothing earth shattering, but um, one thing that I noticed was how we share this connection over images. And I'm not sure quite what to s suggest we do about that, but I know that Apple, for instance, really linked us and um and also that first experience of a death um for her it was the death of a child for me the death of my father but there was something um we really shared around that and part of what i tried to get at was that uh part of a child the way that a child looks that that can have a coldness or a objectivity that it hasn't been um, sentimentalized yet, and and where a child can sort of just look, and I love that about her poem. So I found um, working with her poems, um, and and not just that one, but the second one, the trying to get at in the second one the 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 humor or the tenderness beneath the the scene itself which um you know i understand from from my own mom and and her relationship to memory and and holding on to the past and mine too so i'm maybe i'm thinking in in a really micro cosmic way but i would love the opportunity to connect as we did through images through shared um probes and experiences and you know i kept thinking man wouldn't it be cool to do a little online workshop where we all kind of write about our first experience of death or whatever and then see what happens in terms of how we can collaborate or talk about that um but anyway it that was a really surprising part of it all for me and just seeing the, her cadences, the the cadence of her language. When I read when I read Oksana's um, original raw material, I thought I can't improve on this. <laughs> you know, just the language itself, the um, insights, 
they're so good just as they are. I almost felt scared to step in and do any, you know, change it or bring myself to it. But once I saw that it could be an act of empathy and collaboration, that really shifted. And and to to whatever we can do to connect along those lines, I think would be really a wonderful thing for all all of us. It really was for me. It changed me. Changed my work. Thank you, Diane. Um, I think those are some really great thoughts on empathy. And it also just sounds like translating is like getting to read poems in a much closer, much more micro way. And I think that yeah. that comes through. And I think hearing your translations and hearing that Apple is very fascinating. It's like, was that planned or something? Um, <laughs> but I think it's a great, great opportunity for us to also tap into like possibilities of how much we do share um, under what we don't don't share. Yeah. Um, I also like to just say a quick shout out to Oksana because everyone has talked about how you sort of created the first trot and done that. So thank you for making um, everything else possible. Um, and I see it, comments in the chat about uh, our Ukrainian poets being in the middle of the night. So I think that those are all of the questions that I have. Um, thank you all for actually coming here and um, sharing your poems, sharing your translations, and sharing your thoughts with us. Very grateful too. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Logan, thank you. Hey, Logan, thanks so much for the, uh, for the Q&A. How incredibly in insightful. And well, let's, let's end the way that we uh, normally end poetry at tech events, and, and that's with gratitude. And I wanna thank all of you, our wonderful, wonderful poets for, for being here tonight. Uh, Ludmila, I, Diane, Boris, Javier, Luba, Jenny. Oh my goodness, what a fantastic evening. And I, I know that uh, we're all inspired um, by uh, by the event tonight. Uh, and, and to our audience, I wanna say buy books, buy these poets books. Um, on the Poetry and Tech website, there's a link to Lost Horse Press who um, it has 20% off uh, the books tonight. Um, and I think it's just for tonight. Maybe it'll stretch to the morning. I don't know. But I say that to say buy the books right now. But uh, and Oksana, thank you uh, so much. Uh, and and um, a, our audience, what you don't know is all the behind the scenes work that Oksana uh, did. She's really the uh, the coordinator, the facilitator, the glue that binds it all together. And two, um, Oksana is a scholar and a translator and also a, a, an amazing poet. So I hope that you'll uh, seek out Oksana's work uh, as well. Uh, special thanks to, uh, to Oleg and, uh, and Kave. Um, th thanks to Purdue University, uh, Harvard. Thanks for your support. Uh, you have our, our gratitude. Uh, coming up at Poetry at Tech on February 17th, we have Martina Spada and Jasmine Elizabeth Smith, along with Bruce McEver. Uh, so please join us for that. You can uh, check out the Poetry at Tech website for more information on that event and for our free poetry workshops uh, that are coming up. Those will be, be posted uh, very soon. Um, Ilya, what a great night, my friend. Fantastic, we are so, so grateful to everybody. Thank you. Yeah. And love everybody, to thank you, everyone. Show. Everybody be safe. Thank you, everyone. And I would like to second tra Travis in uh, read this poet and discover others. There is, in fact, a lot of uh, published work by Ukrainian poets, by Ukrainian writers. And uh, the best that you can do in this kind of situation is to support them and support you know, everything that's coming out that's of high quality by reading it, by discussing it, by recommending it, and uh, you know, inviting kind of this kind of writers into your own life, as well as allowing uh, yourself to be invited into theirs. And I know how important it is today, especially for all of us, for all of the people in Ukraine and all of the Ukrainian writers and poets to have this kind of a dialogue and this kind of a support. This really matters. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. And thank you, Oleg. And I, I wanna end with one final thank you, and that's to Skanda 
Skanda Prasad. Uh, Skanda, we, we couldn't do this without you. You are our tech genius, our tech wizard, and uh, well, you also write amazing poems too. So oh. uh, <laughs> you are very talented, but thank you so much for, for all that you do to keep poetry at tech uh, uh, between the ditches. We love it. Everyone stay safe. Stay safe wherever you are. Wishing you well. See you next time. Good night. Yeah. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye.